Tomorrow, New York State's mask mandate, which has been in place for over a year, will expire. It is a major step in New York's reopening. We have to reopen. We have to reopen smart. We have to reopen with a cautious eye. But we have to get back to life, and we have to get back to life and living, and we have to do it the way New Yorkers do it. We have to do it quickly and robustly. Effective this Wednesday, we're going to adopt the CDC's new guidance and regulations on masks and social distancing. So there is one person in charge of carrying out New York City's reopening, and he is a familiar face. Former NYPD Chief Terrence Monahan. he's now the Senior Advisor for Recovery and Safety Planning, and he joins us this morning to discuss the plan that he's been putting in place for months now. Good morning. Good to see you. Fancy headset. Good morning. Great to be back with you. I know. Dan says you have a fancy headset on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tomorrow, a huge day for New York. But, you know, you've been planning this for quite some time. How long have you been planning? And what does it look like on your end? All right, for the last couple of months, this is what I've been doing. We're working to see what we can do to make people feel safe coming back into New York City. We want to have the streets filled with people again. We want to see Times Square back up to 400,000 people a day walking through it. We want to make sure that people who get on our subways feel safe. So I've been working with every city agency, uh, getting them to be productive, getting them to do what they need to do to make sure people feel safe coming back into the city. So how do you do that, well, right? What does that mean? Yeah. Because we have that recent gun violence, subway crimes have not painted this inviting picture saying, hey, come on over, tourists. So what you're talking about the steps, what are they to make sure people feel that keyword, which is safe when they visit the city? 100%. Listen, you could quote crime stats left and right. Uh, the reality of crime, the perception of crime, or the perception of crime is what's most important to get people back into the city. So we need to make sure that there is a visible presence out there. So I've been talking with Kathy O'Reilly on a, a regular basis when it comes to the subway system. Obviously, you heard the mayor announce it yesterday. There is going to be a lot of police officers mm -hmm. on the subway system to make sure people feel safe. You know, you want to see a cop as you get onto the system. You want to see them on the train while you're there. You want to see them when you get off the train. You know, there were only 31 crimes within the transit system last week. But uh, there's going to be an additional, I think it's 1,100 cops a day into the system mm -hmm. so people feel safe as they're riding. And I'm talking consistently with different businesses, all our major venues, and, and listening to them to see what yeah. they need to make sure they feel safe. You know, Penn Station, probably one of the biggest... Yeah. Uh, complaints that we've gotten so we've uh, spoken with uh, all the other agencies dhs in particular mm -hmm. homeless services they're putting a ton of additional resources into the penn station good 51 service in, providers a day Terrence, let me yes. ask you, how do you factor in the mental health issue here because a lot of people are pointing to that right you have the the violence but you also have this connection to mental health problems Obviously, and I'm speaking with DOHMH, uh, they're getting their resources out there. It's important that we're identifying people who are in crisis and getting them the help that they need. Mm -hmm. I spoke with uh, health and hospitals. You know, there was a, a problem going back with the beginning of COVID that there weren't enough hospital beds for people within crisis. Well, now they assure me they have more than enough beds for Good. people that if something is going on, we can get them in there, get them the help they need. But DOHMH is out there now with their counselors actually looking for people that are, are right. having issues and trying to get them the help that they need. You know, hopefully you can do it while they're still out on the streets, connect them with the services that are out there, the community based services. And then all else fails, you know, call 911 if you see someone out there in crisis. Yeah. And the NYPD so, will be able to get, get out there and get them the help that they need. Safety, mental health, that is a huge aspect to reopening. But now there's this new this new guidance, right, about the mask wearing. What is your advice then for the businesses and private venues on the, how they should move forward with this reopening, right? And in especially when it comes to the mask wearing when somebody walks inside because you don't want them to then have to become the mask police or vaccine police. Exactly. Listen, every business is going to have to do what they're comfortable with uh, for themselves and their employees. Uh, I would not suggest trying to check out and make sure on a smaller level venue uh, of people being vaccinated. A lot of it is going to have to be 
whether or not people want to be able to get out open, get vaccinated. I, I can't see any reason right now not to get vaccinated. You know, MSG is talking about you want to go to a game. Well, yeah. you better be vaccinated to get in. Mm. So a lot of venues uh, may just close the door to you if you're not a vaccinated person. It's your choice. It's your option. But uh, if we're going to completely beat this virus and get back to 100% normal, I think we need yeah, everyone totally. to go out there and, and get that shot. Well, you mentioned MSG. Let's talk about the city and basketball fans. they got a lot to cheer about, right, with both teams making it to the yeah. playoffs. So you're going to be working alongside officials at MSG and Barclays Center to ensure proper COVID safety protocols are followed. How are you making that happen? And who are you rooting for? <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, my New York Rangers are out of the playoffs right now. Didn't make it this year, so I'm a bigger hockey fan than basketball. But I tell you what, it's great to see the Knicks back in the playoff run. Great to see the Nets. The Nets have a tremendous team this year. It's excitement to have New York teams back in it. I'm tired of seeing Boston teams win things. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're dealing directly with all the security directors yeah. at these venues. Actually, I'm going to be on a call later on today. Uh, with New York City Company and a lot of our venue people just to talk about what they need, what help they need from the different city agencies, not just the NYPD, yeah. to make sure that all these events go off smoothly Good. and uh, we're, we're just successful. New York right. has got to come back, and it is. Let's keep this going, okay? Come on back. We're out of time here, but we'd like to have you back. It's good to see you smile. Good to see you in a regular suit, yeah. sir, <laughs> right? This is new for you. Had to, you have to go headset. buy all these new suits. Um, yeah, it's cost me a lot of money with these. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I know it? Yeah, seriously. Hey, uh, come back soon, sir. As, as we continue to Good reopen, we want to hear from you. All right, pleasure seeing you. Best Take care. of luck with the big reopening.